Hello, welcome to a video. Today we will be doing a book haul. These are physical books that I have hauled over the months of January and February. It's a lot more than I ever expected it to be. I don't know what happened. I just got a little carried away this month. <laughs> but to be fair, a lot of these were gifted to me or free or very cheap. So I feel okay about that. I've also received a lot of like e-arcs and e-books and I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks and have a lot of library books still as well but this is all just all like books that I'm physically adding to my library. So I'll start with um A Goodwill Find which was Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I read this in high school and I've I really just mostly read Kurt Vonnegut in high school so you know like I just already know that I will like this book and we actually found two copies of it so that Cody and I can read it simultaneously so we're just like one chapter in right now but um but I am looking forward to continue reading these they were literally 99 cents each that's a bargain. That is a bargain. The next book uh, is The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro. I have been listening to this as an audiobook for like a full year and I don't know why I just haven't finished it. Um, I have no idea why. I have it on Audible even I think. I found this in one of those little box like lent book lending boxes in my neighborhood. If you don't know what that is, look at my last video where I went and donated a bunch. Um, but I found this a few weeks ago in one of those boxes and I just figured maybe I would try to read the physical copy. It's also very beautiful. I really like this cover a lot. Um, the Very Giant is just a very weird... It's a weird story. I think everything that Kazuo Ishiguro wrote, writes girl writes is pretty bizarre and just um kind of like psychological but the thing that I always think about with this book is how they live in this this little village where every day this like mist rolls in I think they call it the mist or the fog or something but once the mist rolls in then everyone like loses their memory um and so a couple's child goes missing and no one remembers but the parents start to like remember enough to leave the little village and go on a little adventure. So um, yeah, that's this book. I am really excited to finish it. I don't know why I haven't. Next book I also got at Goodwill for $2.99 and that is Gut Symmetry by, Symmetries by Jeanette Winterson. Jeanette Winterson is a queer, I think British author maybe I wanna say. Maybe not, but I know she's a queer author, and I had never heard of this book, but um, I just read the description on the back, and I read this line, which took it. Just listen. <clears throat> the high wire artist of the English novel redraws the romantic triangle for the post-Einsteinian universe, where gender is as elastic as matter, and any accurate grand unified theory must encompass desire alongside electromagnetism and gravity. There are a lot of things in that sentence that I didn't understand and that I also really love. Okay, the next two books I picked up uh, when actually on a field trip to a an Asian market that we have here in Portland called Uwojimaya. I know there's one in Seattle too. Um, there might be one other places but they it's just a big like asian grocery store but they also have a bookstore in the back and uh so i got two books there the first one i got is dissolving classroom by junjio ito and this is or junji ito this is a manga and junji ito writes horror manga so i'm honestly <laughs> I haven't read it yet, I'm kind of scared, but I have always wanted to try to read something by Junji Ito, and I've never even read a horror manga. I stick to like shujo and really cute yaoi kind of manga, so um, this will be a new experience for me. I got a graphic novel called Isola, 
Uh, this is by Brendan Fletcher and Carl Kershaw. And I actually already read this one. This is just volume one. Um, the artwork is stunning. The colors are beautiful. I love how each like spread has uh, like one color central kind of thing. This is a story of this warrior who is trying to transport a, her like queen who's been somehow transformed into this tiger. I'm gross now. I've been talking through burps. They are trying to go on this journey to somewhere. We don't really know where they're going, but they're encountering a lot of people who are kind of trying to like uh, capture the queen and steal her away. And it's very, um, I don't know. It's, it's just a very like grand escapade adventure kind of story uh, that probably it's a fantastical world, but it feels a little bit medieval. The next two books will probably be no surprise. I have already talked about them on my channel. And that is, um, or the first one is Macbeth. And this is by Shakespeare. This is the Pelican, what are they called? The Pelican Shakespeare edition that have these beautiful illustrations on the cover. Actually, I actually don't know if I ever mentioned that I found um, two of these at Goodwill as well, but I also got The Tempest and Measure for Measure, which are that same edition. And then of course I have Twelfth Night from our last uh, Shakespeare, the December Shakespeare Club. And now I have Macbeth, so I have four of these beautiful Pelican editions, and I am super happy about them. Um, I didn't know about these until I saw Alexa from Library of Alexa start talking about how she wants to go through and read all of the Shakespeare plays, and um, she is also collecting this Pelican edition, and I just think that they're absolutely gorgeous. I really love the illustrations. And yeah, I haven't read the, the Tempest yet, but I've read the other three. Great stuff. And then to go with that is the other book for the Shakespeare Book Club, which is As I Descended by Robin Talley. Um, this is a young adult paranormal kind of thriller retelling of Macbeth. I just finished this pretty recently too. And if you're interested to know my thoughts on both this and Macbeth and the comparison between the two, then uh, stay tuned on March 1st because Sarah and I will be doing a live show for the Shakespeare Book Club. And if you're interested to know more about the Shakespeare Book Club, I'll leave all of that information down there. The next book um, I got from my library, but they were giving these out for free, just like free copies to keep. Um, and this is The Girl Who Fell From the Sky by Heidi Duro. This is like our... There's a whole series of events happening um, around this one book. It's like an event called One City, One Book. There are like different kinds of like themed events that all surround this. I think maybe, I don't know if it's over or not. I haven't read it yet, but um, I know that this deals a lot with topics of race and identity and transformation. And so I am very excited to get to this that's i'm yeah the next two books i showed briefly in my last vlog i want to say um and these are books that i got from powell's the bookstore here in portland the first one i got is the stone sky by nk jemison this is the third book in the broken earth trilogy and i am more than halfway through it now and I am loving it so 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 much. I will say that um all three of these so far I have listened to as audiobooks and read along at the same time because like that's just how I have to get through high fantasy but I am very grateful that um I found all of the audiobooks through my library app been really easy and I'm also glad that I have a physical book because I think I would miss a lot of content if I was just listening to the audiobook if that makes sense and I can like go back and see like the spellings of names and make sure that I know who they're talking about because they're I mean it's such a well-crafted world that um it's all like very new to me still even on the third book and then the other book I got at Pals was Freshwater by 
eh, a Kueki Amezi. I have already featured this in a couple of videos, but this is uh, by a non-binary author. Again, just deals with identity, with, with family, with uh, Nigerian culture, and I think just kind of like weaving through your own identity while also being welcoming of like the sense of otherness and like other things that don't necessarily uh, fit the status quo. So I think that this book will really hit hard for me. The next book is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Mikado. This um, is Carmen Mikado's memoir about being in an abusive queer relationship. I just started reading this one today. I actually received this as a gift from Alexa at a library of Alexa, and we are currently buddy reading this together. So I'm only, <coughs> I've only read the first 50 pages, but I am absolutely loving it. It's so uh, poignant, it's so vulnerable, it's so honest, and I really appreciate that in any story and just in any author being able to write something like that and like having the courage to publish it and like promote it and talk about it and like exist after this exists even though it's such an intense part of her life and then we have the pop <laughs> the pop you wore by rf kuang this is the first i believe in what's going to be a trilogy i know that the second book just came out um maybe at the end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020 i'm not sure i know it was really recently this was a gift from sarah over at streaming books thanks so much um this was actually a kind of a gift exchange because i made a new intro for her channel so go over to her latest video and check out that intro i made it's like pretty cute i think just like you. I don't know much about this story. I know that it's fantasy. I know that it also deals with topics of uh, oppression and segregation and race. And so I, I think that it will be really good and something that I love to see those topics explored in fantasy. And I have just heard people love this so much and i know specifically mina from mina reads has been talking about the second book the dragon republic non-stop so i'm very excited to finish this and then move on to the dragon republic because i just think it's amazing when someone rates a second book in a trilogy five stars like i feel like that's pretty rare but i definitely was feeling that with the uh, obelisk gate i give that five stars and i think that i I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is another just full out five star trilogy. Last two books here are books that I just recently got from Goodwill. I actually made a post on Instagram and on Twitter uh, just asking for input on which books I should buy because someone must have just come into that Goodwill like that day or the day before and donated a bunch of really, really good books, good like recent releases and popular books and books that have just been on my radar for a long time. But it was honestly hard to narrow it down. A lot of people wanted me to get the book Daisy Jones and the Six by Day Taylor Jenkins Reid. I, for some reason, have, don't have much interest in reading that book. And I decided that if I did end up reading that, that I would um, go for the full cast audiobook because that just sounds amazing to me that sounds um just more interesting for me to read and that is something that i can get from my library app as well as the audiobook for the martian which was another highly um highly requested book to get from that pile but i ended up just getting two and the first one i got is we are okay by nina lacour i have only heard a little bit of this or only paid attention a little bit i guess here on booktube but a lot of people told me to get this book it's pretty short it's young adult it deals with heavy topics i know that there are some trigger warnings for suicide and depression and i that's like kind of all that i know about this but i think that this will be a perfect book to turn to for like the next year on contemporary a-thon because it is pretty short or um 
I think that like the cover is just beautiful in itself. I haven't actually looked at it. The inside, whew, that is nice. And then the last book that I decided to get was Pond by Claire Louise Bennett. This book has been on my radar for so long. I used to work in this like coffee shop slash bookstore that was like three years ago and this book was for sale there and I remember like on almost every shift I'd be like should I get pond? Should I get pond? No, no, I should not. Like, oh, there was like only one copy and I was like, okay, I shouldn't get it. But I just kind of forgot about it for a little bit, especially as I've started booktube because this was way before I started booktube. And I am so excited to read this. It's another pretty short book. I think it's, le yeah, less than 200 pages. And from what I can understand of the summary, is that it's very bizarre and it's um I think kind of like a narrative is that the word I want to use like definitely a narrative fiction it's very um it seems very atmospheric I don't know if this is true but I want it to give me Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard vibes but I think it'll be like maybe even a little bit more than that. I'm also getting like secret garden vibes from the cover and the summary, but I have no idea if that's true. So let me know if you've ever read this because I haven't heard anyone on booktube talk about this, but I really, really, really want to read it. And I might even just put this on my March TBR because I'm super excited to get to it. Uh, <laughs> those are all the books that I have acquired this month. Way more than I ever intended to. I don't know how I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> like I said, most of those were either from Goodwill or they were super cheap or they were gifted to me. And I really appreciate everyone who has ever sent me a book um, through my wish list. That is so freaking nice of you. You have no idea how much that makes my day when I see a package in the mail. I am just really looking forward to seeing your comments about these books if you've read any or if you're interested in reading any. Uh, so yeah, that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.